going on? This is Coach Matthews, kmatthewsfootball.com. Today I'm here with the original Coach Matthews, my dad, Tom, and he's going to talk to us about his 4-2-5 defense. Specifically, they're going to, we're going to look at how he defends zone read and some of the run-pass option game that comes off of that. So without further ado, Tom. Thanks, Kevin. Hey, guys. Pleasure to be here. Uh, love talking defensive football. Um, love talking about coaching defense. And uh, you'll hear me say this a lot. I want to coach defense, not defenses. There's a thousand ways to skin a cat. I don't care what front you play. I don't care whether you believe in an odd front, even front, 4-2-5, 4-3, 5-3. There are just some basics to defensive football that we have to coach to be successful. And, and we're really big on teaching stance, alignment, technique, key, reaction, and responsibility. And I know that's a lot, but, but we want to make sure our kids know how to line up in a proper stance. They want to know what their alignment is, what their technique is, and then what's their key. And once they have all those things now, what is their reaction and responsibility in that defense? So we want to make that as simple as we can for them, at the same time being complicated enough to handle the week-to-week -week changes that we get from teams. We want to put our defense in during two-a-days, and we don't want to make drastic changes as we go along. We want to cover everything. Uh, we don't necessarily want to talk about plays. We want to talk about where they're attacking us. Okay? But you, you, I mean, there are only four holes to the left, four holes to the right, and there's three actions. Okay? So we want to make sure that kids think along those lines. So that it doesn't matter if one week we're seeing a, a trap from a wing T team, or if we're seeing something from an I team, or if we're seeing a trap from a zone team. If, if that action is at our linebackers, it's the same type of play. It's fast flow, it's downhill. Um, if it's something outside, you know, and they're, they're, they're getting outside with, with, with fast flow, then that's no different than a sweep on a toss sweep or whether it's a zone read uh, coming out there for us. It just depends on where it's attacking. So there, there's a lot of different ways there, but we want to make sure that football is simple and easy to teach. Um, and again, at the same time, complicated enough to handle what we see. So like Kevin said, we're going to talk about our version of 425, how we handle zone read, um, how we handle run pass options. And for us today, we'll talk 425, and we'll talk behind it uh, what we're going to talk about playing against doubles, uh, 10 personnel um, with uh, simple split field coverage, uh, ball in the middle of the field. Uh, we, we call it two blue solo. So we're going to play two on the strong side, blue on the weak side. They're not going to go to trips in this, so, but, but that's how we would call it in the huddle. Okay? So we would call you know eagle uh, two blue solo. And so that's how we're going to line up today. And uh, we'll, we'll talk a little football with you on how we line up. So we're, we're going to get this doubles formation, 10 personnel, uh, balls in the middle of the field, quarterback, running back, even with, maybe behind the quarterback, Okay, uh, typical zone read type look where they're, they're going to attack something where that running back's probably going to come across the line of scrimmage, maybe attack the eight gaps in there. So that's what we're going to see. So our strength call here from our zip linebacker is going to be a Louie call. We're going to call it strong left. So our zip's going to call this strong left. So our tackle is going to get in a three. Okay, now our outside techniques, whether it's a three, a five, a nine, we are going to play them tight. We're not going to play our outside techniques loose. I don't want my defensive linemen to be bullfighters. I want them to be block protectors. We want to go to that philosophy of keeping these guys off of our linebackers and letting them make plays. So we want them to be aggressive. We are going to attack and then react, but we are not going to avoid people. We're not going to play in the gap. We're going to get on people. We're going to aggressively control them with our hands. Our, Inside hand on that inside breastplate, outside hand on those pads. We're going to steer the car, get those pads turned, and we are going to control the line of scrimmage that way. So our tackle is in a three. Our Sam, strong side end, is going to get in a five. Now, if this tackle is playing it tight, he's either playing splitting the outside leg of the guard or he's playing eye to eye, his inside eye and the outside eye of the guard. The Sam is probably playing foot to foot, maybe playing eye to eye. He can play a little looser with a five because he's got that three technique underneath for himself. Okay? On the back side, our nose is going to be in a one. He is going to play foot to foot. Okay? He's an inside technique. We want him to play just a little looser for certain reasons, but he is going to play a little looser on that, that side as a nose in, in a one technique. Our Fox. Uh, our weak side in, usually playing in a five, and he's an outside technique, so we know he's going to play that technique tight. Now, if we talk about defensive linemen and we talk about attack and react, we always talk about keeping our guys in the past at heel depth. 
We didn't want to create seams that people could run through. And, and that's really no different now from week to week, but we do certain things a little differently when we turn them loose as, as they attack. But we want them to stay square. I want kids to play with square pads. If you talk to anybody I've ever coached on defense, they hear it all the time. I say, keep your pads square as long as possible. Don't turn. Play square to the line of scrimmage. Create a wall that we can defend in that wall. Don't create seams in that. And we're basically going to do the same thing, but I think there's some ways that with the, the, the zone read that you have to come up with some ways in the zone read and there are RPOs to do the same thing, to be aggressive, to keep pads square, but to change their assignment just a little bit with some simple coaching. Okay? So, our zip linebacker who called the strength, he's going to stack in a 30. Our Mike is going to be in a 30 also. Okay? Now, on a strong side, you know, our Hawk, whether we bring him out, you know, in two, I guess if, if we were going to line up right now and just base, you know, we'd be maybe five yards deep outside eye of that uh, uh, slot receiver. Our corner would be at seven, maybe, maybe seven or eight yards off of him, tilted in, reading through two into the backfield. Our free safety will split two and three at about ten yards deep, okay? On the weak side, okay, we're going to play two on the strong side, blue on the other side, so we're going to be four to five yards deep with our corner tilted. Um, outside of number one, and our whip, our weak side safety is going to be about eight to ten yards deep. Both our safeties are going to be flat-footed, square stance. They're going to tap read, reading through number two. Okay, so not much different there in a four-two-five with with split field coverage. And the ball's in the middle of the field. Depending on the, the opponent we're playing, whether we use split field, whether we use cover three, it really doesn't matter. A lot of a lot of very similar things going on. But one of the reasons we want to show you this is because of the split field coverage. Even though this corner may have primary run support, this whip's reading number two. And if number two in the RPO is going vertical, running a slant or anything, and whip's got a jumping, he has to be able to do that confidently and know that this ball is not going to get outside. Okay? So uh, we want to make sure that we give him an opportunity to do that. And I think you'll see that's what we're going to do here. Um, so our zip and Mike are going to read the back of their side. If there's no back their side, they're going to look at the fullback. We're not going to use the quarterback as a running back. We're then going to cross key. So in this case, the zip doesn't have a running back to his side. He's going to cross key. The Mike does have the running back to his side, so he's going to key that, that running back on his side. Both of them are going to be tight stance. Um, depth depends on how good we are up front. The better we are, the tighter they can get. Okay? Probably no tighter than four yards, but let's say right now they're at four to four and a half. Uh, they're, they're, they have a nice narrow stance. Their eyes are focused on their target, and as soon as they see that key pick a direction, they are going to aggressively get downhill with that first step. And that first step, because they have that narrow stance, is going to bring them to square. It's going to bring them into a good solid base, and they start with a very narrow field of vision. They're zeroing in on their key. As they start to step, that field of vision is going to open up now, and they're going to start to see what's going on in front of them, and then they're going to react accordingly. Our defensive linemen have a pressure key and a visual key, so they're going to feel the pressure as they start to run this zone read to um, our left side, their right. He's going to step and try to reach him. Now, we know that offensive linemen want to get their hands on you on the second step. So we have to make sure that we are aggressive, attacking the line of scrimmage, and we want our hands on that offensive lineman as quickly as possible. And we want to control the inside breastplate and get on that shoulder pad and get him turned if they're trying to reach us. We're not afraid of getting reached. That's why we play this thing tight, because we are going to work our tails off on pad control. And we're going to get this thing and we're going to start to reach, and we're not going to just spread this out, and play this thing real wide. We're going to get him turned, and we're going to get upfield. We are going to contain. So if I am the, the end, in this case it's the strong side end, and I feel that I'm getting reached, I am going to chain, uh, contain. Now, he's not force contain, but he's going to contain. He's going to keep that running back inside the box. The tackle starts to feel the same thing. He feels that he's getting stretched, he's attacked, he's got inside control, he's turning those shoulder pads, and he is going to penetrate. He is not going to stop at heel depth. He is penetrating, but he is taking this guy with him. We're not releasing him. Okay? We are in no time being in bullfighter mode, where we are trying to beat them with some great move and let three guys go up on our linebacker. 
I am on his breastplate, I am on his shoulder pads, I'm turned, and I'm playing through the V of that net getting penetration. I am not going to allow that running back to run in my gap. I am going to control the B gap. I am going to control the C gap. What this allows this zip to do, he is going to see very clearly where that window is. He is going to see that window. Is this open? Am I going to stay in the B or am I coming back into the A, folding back? He's going to be aggressive. Okay? Because that play to him, okay, as it starts to go outside and he sees the stretch, that's not action at him, that's action to the outside. Now it's not fast flow, but he is going to get downhill and he's going to get ready to fill where that play needs to be filled. Whether it's in the B gap or the A gap, he's going to make these guys right. Now the center steps going to start to climb. They're trying to zone those two, and he's going to climb up on that thing, but we are going to be downhill. He's not going to push him out. He's going to be able to fold underneath, and what this creates is both of these A-gaps are going to be wide open, frying my nose and my mic. When my nose start to fill the, the reach, he's the same thing. He is attacking inside breastplate, outside pad. He's foot to foot, so it's going to be very difficult for this guard to cut him off. Okay, That nose can't get cut off. And so now he's going to get flat down the line. He is going to stop at heel depth, stay square as he starts to read the play, and he is going to come down the line of scrimmage flat. He's not going to turn his pads too early because if for some reason that thing cuts all the way back, I want him to be able to play through the V of the neck of that guard and play it from inside out and not allow that running back to have multiple ways to go. As the tackle steps, and starts to get in that zone scheme against the nose and the mic, the same thing. I'm going to be repetitive here. He is putting his hand, boom, on that breastplate, on the pad, and as he starts to disappear, he's going to close with him. Just like we teach every week against every team that might be running power, if I'm not blocked, my eyes go right inside. And as my eyes go inside, I'm starting to see that action. Is a guard coming back? Are they pulling the guard at me in the trap? Are they running a running back at me? What are they sending at me? And I'm going to be a football player, but as I start to release and that guy goes upfield, I am now chase contained because I am the backside end. Okay? And on chase contained for us, nobody gets deeper than our chase contained guy. He plays deep as the deepest. So he's going to work himself to the mesh point. And he's going to be deep as the deepest, and he's going to play that mesh point with his eyes. He's going to see the football. If the football's handed off and he knows that it's there, he can fold now and chase down from behind. If that quarterback disengages and keeps the football, he is going to keep that quarterback inside the best he can. We know that quarterback's going to be a great athlete, but he's going to be at the mesh point, deep as the deepest, and at the very least, if that quarterback does get outside, he's got to bubble his tail back, which allows us to get there, but he is going to be try to keep him inside. That's his job as Chase contained. So it doesn't matter whether the week before they were running the, the fake in the ISO and handed to the flanker coming back, on the weak side he had Chase contained. Now, if for some reason they were faking this to the halfback and the zone blocking scheme was going to the weak side, these responsibilities would change. Our mic would step because of that action, but he'd see the big picture and he'd start to come back. And our fox would now be contained, our nose would now be penetration, our tackle would now be the full player, and our Sam would now be the chase contained player. And we work that drill over and over and over so that they know when they don't get blocked, they've got to do it so it can go either way as they get there, okay? So this zip is making it right. The mic has both these A gaps to work off of. He's stacking behind that nose and reading, and this running back feels that conflict right now, the contain and the penetration, feels he's got to take it back. And we've closed that thing yet. Now, if for some reason this quarterback is now going to read our hawk or he's reading our free and they're going to try to throw this slant in behind him and they block this fox, now it doesn't force our guys to play so fast. They can sit back and they don't have to get into this box as quickly and they can just fold in and fill in. Our free can kind of run the alley a little bit. He can fill inside and they've got to be part of your um, inside shells when you do this so that they know where they're going to fill. Just like the whip. The whip knows if two goes vertical, I've got him. So if they're trying to run two on a slant and they get past five to seven yards, Two can play that slant. He doesn't have to come flying up thinking he's got to help on the run on contain. 
The corner, as he sees two goals vertical, he knows that he's got one. So he can stay back here. We still have good contain without having the, the similar force contain that you have on most outside plays. And we can be sound against zone read. We can be sound against RPOs. And we can play this with cover three. We can play it with quarters coverage. It really doesn't matter because I'm not counting on those guys in the perimeter to get into the box and help me with that zone read. So we're going to be aggressive. We're going to teach this from day one, and it's going to be part of everything that we do playing defense. So if we're playing an I team, and I'm the Sam, and I start to get stretched, I'm going to contain. I'm going to penetrate. Nothing changes. This is not a play that I'm teaching them. I'm teaching them to play defense against action. And we feel that that's the best way. So I hope this helps you a little bit. If there's ever anything I can do, contact me through kmatthewsfootball.com, and I would love to talk football with you. Um, it's uh, exciting. Uh, kids play fast, kids play aggressive, and they can tackle, and then you have a chance to be a great football team if you can do that.